of the day. Hey guys, it's Alex Torelli bringing you the hand of the day here from the Duomo in Milano. Awesome spot. This is a $100,000 buy-in tournament. That's about as high stakes as it gets, although there is a quarter million dollar buy-in event here as well in the Aussie Millions. Awesome hand between Dario San Martino and Phil Ivey. This hand is about overbetting, so if you haven't already, make sure you check out my Ask Alec video from earlier this week where I discuss overbetting strategy, and it's a video, third video in a three-part series about bet sizing. So I think this hand really ties up that whole thing, and we're going to talk a lot about overbetting strategy here. So Dario San Martino, Phil Ivey, of course, both awesome high stakes players, spend a lot of time with both of them and uh, know their games pretty well, talk to them a lot about poker. So this hand's really interesting and you get to see a battle of some of the two best players in the tournament circuit today. So before I share this hand with you, be sure to check out my blog, alectorelli.com, after this video where I share things that I only share with you on my website. I use statistical programs and hand analysis and use poker crunching programs to really show you exactly what I think each player's range is in this situation and why I came to the exact conclusion I did. This stuff will really help you take your game to the next level, so be sure to check that out after this video. So of course, Dario San Martino, a great player here from Italy. We had the privilege of spending uh, a summer together in Naples. He showed me around. Uh, awesome guy, got to talk a lot of poker and strategy with him. Great tournament players, definitely one of the best on the circuit today. So this hand is uh, six-handed to start with, so of course players are going to be more aggressive. Uh, each player has 100 big blinds, so this hand is actually going to play a little bit more like a cash game than it is a tournament because the stack sizes are so deep, there's so much room to play post-flop, and there's a lot of room for both players to get creative, as you'll see in a moment. So the blinds are 750 1400 and Phil Ivey opens on the button to 3300. Uh, two and a half X open here, pretty standard. And Dario San Martino calls in the big blind with Jack Nine of Space. So, so far we have a totally standard hand. Phil Ivey's gonna be opening a ton of buttons here. Uh, Dario calls with a great suited connector to play post flop. I don't really see any reason to three bet and isolate Phil Ivey heads up post flop. So, uh, pretty standard hand. We go heads up to the flop. These are the important questions we're tackling here in the 100K challenge event. Not a bad flop for Dario, though there are three hearts out there. He has defended against Phil Ivey's button raise. The flop comes 10-8 rag, all hearts. Dario San Martino checks. Phil Ivey bets 4K, a uh, little under half the pot. Really standard C-bet here. He's going to be C-betting, I think, with pretty much his entire range. It's a great flop for him to C-bet. It's hard for Dario San Martino to really continue here. Uh, and it's hard for Dario to have smashed this flop. So a great spot for Phil at the C bet. And Dario here checks raises to 13K. I don't think Dario is going to continue here. He is getting over 3 to 1 to try to make his hand. He might check raise as a bluff here as well. That wouldn't blow my mind either. I think this is a really good check raise by Dario. He could represent a flush here. Like and both players know that Dario's range here is pretty much a flush or a semi-bluff, but at the same time, it still makes it really hard for Phil Ivey to continue. Even though Phil Ivey knows that Dario is only representing a flush or maybe two pair or a set, it's still hard for him to continue. He can't really three bet the flop here. He has to risk a lot of chips, and uh, he's gonna have to fold a lot of his air. But because Phil Ivey's gonna be betting this flop with something as weak as, let's say, queen five of spades or complete air like that, it's a great flop for Dario to check raise. Dario cannot win the pot on the river with Jack High. So he really has to call here, hope that Phil Ivey checks the turn, and then credibly bluff the river. I think that's a lot harder to do, and he's gonna risk the same amount of money by check raising this flop. It also gives him chances to win the pot on the turn. Of course, if he hits his straight, maybe a jack is good. He has a live card. Uh, and also he has some cards that he could bluff on the turn. If a heart comes, perhaps, Phil Ivey will fold a, a pair or something like that. So he has a lot of ways to win the pot, and ironically, even though he's out of position against one of the best players in the world, he gives himself more chances to win the pot by check raising and more information about the hand than he does by check calling. So great play by Dario here, credit to him, something to take away from this uh, by his play, definitely. From Phil's point of view, I don't really think he can 3-bet here because Dadio's range is pretty much flushes or nothing, and Dadio's really never going to get the money in with a worse hand. Of course, he could have one of the lower sets, but there's a lot more combinations of flushes that Dadio can have than sets, so I think Phil Ivey's only play here is really to call, see what develops on the turn, and play the pot in position. Oh, maybe we're getting a little happier here as the 7 from heaven spikes on the turn. The turn comes a gin card for Dadio, an offsuit 7, so he makes his straight. 
Of course, he's gonna continue betting here. He bets out 18K into 34K. And again, Phil has the same dilemma. He's really only gonna get the money in against flushes. He can't really expect Dario to have uh, much worse that's gonna get the money in. So he still has to be defensive. Just call and see what develops on the river. 18,000 from Dario as he bets those Prussian blue chips. With his straight here. Both these players are still pretty deep stacked here. We don't know if Phil's cards this hand, at least not yet. Now, if, the, if Phil continues here, you got to be at least a little concerned. A little concerned, right? The only thing you lose to is a flush, and it's very hard to flop a flush, right? But if Phil, and if Phil calls again, his most likely hand is a pair and a flush draw, maybe a pair and a straight draw, which are drawing dead against us or drawing to a chop. Phil does call here. Mm, the board does pair on the end. The river is where things really get interesting. The board pairs. It's pretty much a nightmare card for Dario San Martino. He check raised the flop on a bluff, made his hand on the turn, but he knows that the whole time he was really representing a flush or a bluff. So at this point, there's really not much reason that Dario's going to bet the river. If he bets the river in this spot, he's really representing a flush or a bluff. So you can't, he can't expect that Phil Ivey's going to hero call with something much worse. There's not really that many bluffs in Dario San Martino's range. There's a lot of strong hands in Phil Ivey's range, so it's really hard for Dario to profitably bluff this river. So the times that he does bet, I think that Phil has to expect he has a flush or a full house most of the time. There's not really many bluffs in his range, so betting a straight really has no value. There's not many worse hands that call, and he doesn't get any better hands to fold. So even though he does have a massive hand, he made the best hand he could have. It's a situation where against a great player like Phil, who has a great hand reading ability, and who knows that Dadio is a smart, solid player, there's really not much value to be extracted in this hand. So he goes ahead and checks here, which I really like that play. Maybe he could call a small bet. Maybe he could win the most money by the times that Phil Ivey decides to bluff. But there's really not much money to be made, so I think he's checking, sort of hoping the pot goes check, check, or that Phil bets 27,000 where he has an easy check call. And I'm pretty sure that's Dario's plan here on the river, which I believe is the best play. So credit to him again for excellent hand reading throughout the entire hand. Full houses. Wow, and Phil shoves here on the river for 135,000. And you can see Dario is sickened here. I mean, what do you do with Jack-9 in this spot? This is an absolutely sick spot here. Now, Phil throws everybody for a loop, and this is why I chose this hand as the last hand in my overbet series. And he bets 2x the pot here and goes all in. So this is a play you don't see often, especially in tournament poker. And that's because stack sizes are generally so shallow that you don't have wiggle room to 2x overbet the pot on the river simply because there's not that much room left in your stack by the time you get to this situation. So you really got to ask yourself here, what hands is Phil Ivey going to play this way? Is it possible that he's bluffing? If you use the math, which of course Phil knows, to successfully overbet 2x the pot, your play has to work two-thirds or 67% of the time. So I don't really see a reason that it's a, it's a pretty large amount of time that your, hand, your play has to credibly work. From Phil's point of view, I don't really see a reason for him to ever 2x the pot here uh, on a bluff. Because Dario San Martino never really has a hand that he's check calling the river with, remember, Dario's range is either full houses that are going to check the river and trap Phil Ivey, or bluffs, something like Queen Jack with the Queen of Hearts, that are now going to check fold. So he doesn't really have many check calling hands in his range, simply because he wouldn't have played the hand and got to the river with hands that have bluff catchers in them. So I think that most of the time, Dario San Martino is either going to be check raising with the nuts or check folding the times he has bluffs. That For that reason, and because his hand range is so divided between really, really strong hands and absolute bluffs, Phil Ivey has no reason to 2x pot over bet here. If Phil Ivey was bluffing with something like Ace Queen with the Ace of Hearts, for example, there's no reason to 2x over bet because the same thing is going to happen if he bets half the pot. Dadio is going to check raise when he has the nuts, and Dadio is going to fold when he has air. So there's no reason for him to risk his entire stack, especially in a tournament where he can't rebuy, when Dadio is going to react the same regardless of his bet size. For that reason, if you really, really think about the hand, even though that Phil Ivey is only representing nut flushes and full houses with a 2x over bet, I just don't think that there's that many other hands in his range. Of course, it's hard to make those hands, and there's a really, really small portion of the deck that he's representing, but at the same time, he's only representing a, a bluff with a 2x over bet if he doesn't have the nuts. There's just not that many bluffs in his range, and it doesn't make sense from a technical standpoint to bet so big on a bluff when a small bet size will accomplish the same thing. For this reason, 
I think that Dario San Martino maybe could get away from his hand on the river. The tough part about this hand is that you know that Dario San Martino's play, and credit to him, is to check call a small bet on the river. He was never expecting a 2x over bet because it's not a play you see often, but against a great player like Phil Ivey, you really gotta be prepared for anything. I think that his plan was to check call the river, which confused him in the hand in the end, and he ended up going with his plan even though that he wasn't planning to check call a 2x over bet, he was just planning to check call something simple like a half size bet or 34,000 on the river or something like that. Uh, we're going to see a call. We're going to see these hands. Is Dario correct? And Phil shows top set. Bet two times the pot on the river and got full value. Look at that 341k pot. So I think he could have got it away from his hand here in the end, even though it's pretty much the best hand he could ever fold in this spot. But that being said, against a great player like Phil, with all the things we just discussed, I think maybe could have let it go. Anyway, that's it from the hand of the day from here from Milan. Uh, if you like this video and you want to see more hands of the days, please subscribe to my channel, putting out a lot more videos. Uh, head over to my blog, alectrelli.com, of course, after this, where I share a lot more math behind this hand. I share all the poker programs I use to run the numbers and really give you deep insight into how exactly I came to this decision, not just from a strategic standpoint, from a mathematical standpoint as well. So hope you enjoy that, and I'll see you guys next week for the hand of the day. Cheers. Dario for that one, right? You're playing Phil Ivey, the best in the world. Man, what a sick hand.